Guys, welcome to What's Barking Local. Thank you kindly for joining us on a gorgeous yet humid Wednesday afternoon across Charlottesville, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, and the world. What's Barking Local, the epicenter or the water cooler for everything animal related here in our backyard and our home. And That's it's powered words. by the fabulous folks at Animal Connection. For more than 17 years, Animal Connection has been the go-to, the market leader for everything all natural, pet related in Central Virginia. On that note, let's Ooh. welcome the pioneer, <laughs> the visionary, the enterprising oh, businesswoman, boy. Patty Bowden, to the show. <laughs> she is looking stunning right here Aww. and fresh from a buying <laughs> trip in Hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta, and it was hot. <laughs> Talk to us about the week that was for you and your business. Well, it was kind of a whirlwind week, and uh, we like to go to trade shows either um, in New York or Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, San Francisco. You know, we try to go to a different regional uh, but international trade show every year just to get great ideas, look at display, see what else is out there that could be pet related but maybe taken in a different way. But, you know, definitely things, cool stuff for store displays. And wait till you see my big red pickup truck. I'm very excited about the the store's big red pickup truck. Uh, so we spent two days, uh, literally I was on a show floor for 14 hours on uh, Wednesday and about ooh, t 11 hours on Thursday. So my dogs were barking, but it was worth <laughs> it. And Christmas is purchased for good dogs and cats and people who love them. And, and uh, we're ready. There's gonna be some really unique things that nobody else has got. You know, <laughs> television and shows like Shark Tank make entrepreneurship seem glamorous oh. and spectacular and the life of a rock star. In a lot of ways, <laughs> it's quite the opposite, Patty. Bowen. It's It's got its days and it's got its days. <laughs> right, I can totally relate you to that. You know. <laughs> yeah. So you are back in Charlottesville. Right. Um, what can we expect for Animal Connection throughout uh, 2019? Wow. Well, well, let's see. Well, we did have our first Pups and Pints over at Three Notch Brewery, and it was a little bit rainy, thunderstormy Thursday nights, but the good news is uh, they're going to be doing it every Thursday night for the rest of this month, and hopefully we can get them to do it next month uh, for August, but show up at Three Notch. There'll be uh, bags of dog treats waiting for you and some really good beers. And let's see, we've got a uh, free frozen treat weekend, all weekend long. We're gonna be uh, spotlighting some of the Primal Pet Foods edible elixirs and some really cool combinations of yogurt and bacon and blueberries and sweet potatoes and butternut squash and yummy things that dogs will like. And they're frozen and very cooling. You know, it's perfect for this kind of weather, but it's all free all weekend long. I love it. That's yep. the first sizzle reel right there. <laughs> we will send a snapshot of uh, what to expect from um, Animal yeah. Connection. And I think what you have done an exceptional job with your mm. show is showcasing and championing the animal community. Rita Mae Brown, our guest, and we'll go to the studio cam and welcome Rita <laughs> to the show. Oh, Epitomizes yeah. that. Oh, my gosh. Well, I met Rita Mae Brown many years ago um, in fox hunting, or as we prefer to call it, fox chasing. We're chasing scent, not, not hurting little animals. But... Um, uh, I became a member of Oak Ridge Fox Hunt Club, who has definitely the world's best tailgate parties after any event. And uh, you know, we just, like parties. Uh, we do like parties. And um, you know, Rita May is a really fun author. She writes the Sneaky Pie Brown series of mysteries, and the Sister Jane uh, horse-related mysteries, among uh, gosh, a lot of other books. I mean, her list is long of the things that she's written, and what a variety and. And so, you know, she's been in Charlottesville a long time, and she knows horses and hounds and local color and lore and gossip and all kinds of fun things. So let's boogie. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that's the start of the second sizzle reel, right. Patty's introduction to Rita Mae. I'm going to throw this to you, and we will get out of the way. Uh -oh. The who, what, when, where, and why of Rita Mae Brown. All right. <laughs> That's it. Say what we got. Yeah. Um, uh. I first saw Charlottesville in 1949, and uh, down at the old CNO train station. And mules took your. They put. They were mule wagons. They put your bags on it. We would come in the summers because uh, part of the family was down here, and uh, in those days, all the young men wore 
coats and ties. I mean, the people were really very fancy. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I loved Virginia. Now, my mother was a Marylander. And so mother said, oh, honey, let me tell you something about Virginia. Uh-oh. She said, <laughs> you know, one out of every four Virginians is mentally ill. You think of your three best friends. If they're all right, it's you. <laughs> so I got the message. She didn't want me to come down here. Oh, God. But it was funny. But it was okay. It all, it all worked out. But we, I mean... Again, Patty and I did meet fox hunting, and, and f fox hunting is an unusual sport And that somebody with millions of dollars can be riding next to someone that doesn't have two cents. Exactly. And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The great matter. equalizer. Yeah, you either can ride the horse or you can't. That's it right. It doesn't matter who you are. And, uh, and that, I think that's the thing I love about it most. And also, it can't be besmirched commercially. You're never going to see somebody in the hunt field with an advertisement on their horse's flank. And all the other sports that I grew up with, and Patty too, I mean, they've all literally been ruined by money, by my standards. Maybe y'all don't think so. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was fun, and you learn a lot. What, what, what I love and what I try to write about in the Sister Jane series is to get, well, sure, you want people to be entertained, but you want them to be thinking about the environment. Exactly. And the way you describe the animals, I mean, she put such a personality to the animals. In fact, you know, describing things like foxes, you know, like fox and, you know, how do you find a fox den? Well, you can smell it, you can look for it. They like to collect shiny things. You know, just the way she describes animals and what they like to do and puts voices uh, to the hounds and to the barn dogs and the barn cats and Personification. And exactly. Yeah. It's a real feel. Well, one of the things that, that, Science is just now catching up because before <laughs> it, it was, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the, the Puritan background or whatever. It, mm. The point was animals like Skinner. Remember B.F. Skinner? They're not supposed to have any personality. They're just driven oh. by need. No. I mean, anybody out there who has a pet knows their personality. The yeah. They have big personalities. And somehow the littler they are, the bigger the personality, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and now science is finally catching up. Like, and even about language, that one of the Hungarian universities has done studies that uh, animals, dogs, they, they've focused on dogs, learn language the same way humans do. The left side is logic, the right side is emotion. Oh, interesting. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. I you... heard somebody say this, and you have a child, so I don't know about this, but somebody said um, that they believe that all babies and all all puppies, kittens, you know, whatever it is, young. You have a command of every language that's in the world. Really? At that time, and it's just how you're raised to what you develop. But, I mean, can you imagine if you could really do that? I mean, I thought that was kind of an interesting concept. <laughs> a little uh, nature versus nurture there. Could be. You have <laughs> um, written over 15 novels? Actually, 68. 68? The 69th is, is in that FedEx box over there being Whoa. sent to my publisher. 69 right. novels? I'm old. I'm old, you know? No, this doesn't aged. count the screenplays. <laughs> Put that into perspective for us. I mean, that is incredible. Um, when I, I was a classics major in college, Greek and Latin, classics and English, and I was one of the beginners of the women's movement. You know, all this was going on. Um, and I couldn't get a job when I graduated because they were afraid I would disrupt the school, like I would uh, organize the women. Oh, we and, never do uh, that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it was really, I mean, oh. I really got knocked around. So I thought, I've got to do something. Nobody's going to hire me. So I thought, well, I, maybe I can write, you know, maybe I can try. And so the first book I wrote, Ruby for Jungle, became an overnight sensation. <laughs> it was the funniest thing in the world. I woke up one morning and I was, I wouldn't say famous, but I was sure notorious. <laughs> Has it always come easy? Writing? Yes. Really? Sure. I know Greek and Latin. Why wouldn't it? I have a tremendous foundation. That's why I am furious they took Latin out of schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the basis of it all is. Western culture, not just our language. Uh, every language, yep. Mm -hmm. When you are, what is, what is your path to inspiration for writing? Some folks, it's getting their mind right. Maybe it's an adult beverage. Some folks have to go to their serene, their happy place. Some folks... <laughs> Oh, what, how do you get inspiration? All I have to do is wake up. Really? No, that's I mean, refreshing. My house You've been is, blessed. I mean, I look at the Blue Ridge Mountains. There's, there's rocks in those mountains a billion years old. What am I next to that? You know, what, you know uh, and I have this one well, dog, rescue dog, who's crippled. He has a twisted spine. And he is happy about life. 
and he just goes through the day. I got a little cart for him. It doesn't work. He falls over and he can't get oh. up. So I just let him go, you know, and he, he's part of the family. And I look at him and I think, you know what? Life is what you make it. Absolutely. That's one thing I really enjoy, too, about, about hunting, especially when we go to your farm, is, you know, some, I've hunted with maybe five or six other hunts in my life, and, you know, sometimes it's, you know, very stuffy and proper and whatnot, but I love the fact that all the dogs are out. I mean, every size, shape. I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, you've got the, the official hounds, but all the other guys come along, too. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, and it's really fun. It's just great to see how joyful they are about being outside and being, it's like a big party. I love it. It. Well, it is a big party, yeah, if you think about it. It is a big party. Uh, Lynn Lloyd, Red Rock Counts, oh, yeah. Red, she lets her pug go with them. I oh. mean, that you're not supposed to do this, of course, but <laughs> I can't help it, besides which I can't keep them in. Uh, but my, my idea of a great day, of course, is to be with animals, but to be hunting the house and to turn around and see everybody smiling. Oh, yeah. It's just great, I love you know? It. I love well, it. Well, you, you don't get old. I mean, Chuck Beagle's riding at 91 years old. Right. And he looks great. Yep. You have the energy and the charisma and the like je ne sais quoi of like a 25 year old. Well, that's very nice to say, but I look in the mirror and I realize plastic surgery won't do it. I need taxidermy. Oh, <laughs> <Jeez. stop laughs> it's it. gone too far. <laughs> what the heck? You've used that line before. <laughs> well, you know, and then I look at some of the congressmen, you know, well, no, we, maybe we shouldn't talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're live for the world, Rita Bay. You can certainly talk about that if you like. Well, I mean, I think we're all uh, concerned with where we are. Amen. And, uh, uh, and, and I pray for congressmen. Uh, but you know what I pray for? I pray they get a Velcro wedgie. A oh, Velcro God. wedgie? Because <laughs> they aren't doing a thing. You know, I look at them and think, how did those people get in there? I mean, you know, my goal is, could you imagine if you were standing at the airport, you know, Dollars or regular, oh, yeah. and a, a plane comes in from Iowa. Just pick two people off. I would say you're, you're the senators for Iowa. They do better than the ones they've got now, oh, my because gosh. they'd be real people. <laughs> they'd be working. I mean, I, I mean, I got. I must say, I, I mean, I'm not in despair. You might as well find the humor in something. But oh, it sure. is <laughs> sometimes it is hard to believe. I love it. That right there, I think, is a perfect ending to the second sizzle reel right there, <laughs> because that was absolutely fabulous. Let me throw this to you here. Um, Central Virginia, Albemarle County, Afton the community in totality. What do you love about this place? It, well, it, it's, it's a mixed blessing. I mean, it's like any mm -hmm. long-term relationship. There's love and hate, obviously. Uh, I've always hated the snottiness, to be blunt, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Patty knows it. I mean, there, there is that element here. Uh, there are people, what we call come here, who think they can buy their way in. I don't like that either. Uh, money is not really what's gonna get you, get you going here. Um, you need, let me put it this way, there's a real easy way to understand Charlottesville and, and this part of Virginia. A Yankee will tell you how smart you are. I mean, a Yankee will tell you how smart he is. A Southerner will tell you how smart you are. And that's the ethos of Central Virginia, a quietness, a sort of... Hospitality. Well, and a, and a sly humor. Like, we would never call mm -hmm. the city council people whose IQs would make a good golf score. That would be rude. But you can <laughs> call them our civic worthies, which in a way is the same thing. That's very <laughs> Southern. Well, what do the civic worthies do today? I, I love that about Charlotte. Well, I love the fact that there's fabulous horse people here, and it's beautiful. But we have not been very good about preserving what we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how you feel, What do you Patty. mean specifically? Yeah. We've destroyed some of the old buildings, which I wish we had not. We've built some really ugly ones <laughs> along oh with boy. it. Yep. And uh, we're allowing our countryside to be somewhat damaged. I mean, we have yep. to have better, and I don't mean people shouldn't live and build beautiful houses, but I think we need to be a little more alert to our water table, what gets into the water. Because all of those beautiful lawns, mm -hmm. all of that fertilizer and stuff, and the poison mm -hmm. gets into your water table. Yep, watershed's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we've got to think about these mm -hmm. things. And, uh, and we're a little behind on it. I mean, we are. Well, partly because we've had it too good. Our, our problems in Central Virginia are really the problems of plenty. Mm -hmm. You know, we have mm -hmm. fairly decent soil. It's not Iowa, mm -hmm. but it's fairly decent. We have all the water we need. We have beauty. We have four distinct, fabulous seasons. Oh, yeah. I mean, how can you? I could do with three. This one's, this week's a little <laughs> tough. This is my least favorite. <laughs> Yeah, yeah this, this is my this least was favorite. a challenge. And the tough part is we have this through August. 
But oh, you know, man. at the same time, we're above the mud, so what can we complain that, about? That is really? true. That's true. It could right? be worse. Um, how about the, um, you've touched on this a little bit, and you guys have this in common, the horse aspect of the community. And a lot of folks we have on the show, because Patty's well-connected, mm -hmm. from that community. Horse people tend to be very practical. Mm -hmm. um, and they tend to be environmentalists, whether they say it or not. You can't not be. You're out there, even if you're not a fox hunter. Even if, let's say, you're a show ring rider, you see everything. But I think the most remarkable thing about horse people, we are medium-sized predators. Any animal that has its eyes in the middle of its head is a predator because we have to focus on our prey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any animal with eyes on the side of its head is a prey animal. So a horse is a large prey animal. Here's the medium-sized predator having to understand the mind of a large prey animal. And a lot of people don't get it. They're, they're up there, well, why, why does it do this? Well, why does the horse do that? But if they will humble themselves and learn how a horse thinks and meet him halfway, what's really beautiful is the horse is there waiting for you. That's the truth. I, uh, my, one of my mentors, Buck Brandeman, who I, I'm going to get to ride with next week, one of my favorite analogies or intros he has to uh, his seminars or clinics, whatever you want to call them, but uh, he's just talking about horses and the fact that you know, we are predators and we, we're asking these horses to let us get on their back in a predator position where an animal might you know, dig their claws in, go for the jugular, you know, hold on to that. And then, oh, and by the way, we're going to strap hides of dead animals <laughs> on you, and we're going to ride you. You know, and you've got to have a lot of trust from an animal to be able to do things like this. So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> also, once you, once you have that bond, it, it's irrational. It, it, it's like falling in love. It really is. What do you mean it irrational? Is. Well, all of what gets you to be a good lawyer or a good businessman is not necessarily going to help you with horses or hounds. Mm -hmm. You have to look at things in a different way. Uh, it's, very, it's ultimately very spiritual, okay. which is the one aspect, of course, people don't want to talk about because it mm -hmm. makes you sound like a mush ball. But it is. It's <laughs> spiritual. And you connect to the animal and you connect to other people. One of the great things I love about horse people is we can cuss one another like a dog. I mean, we can really lose our tempers. But if you, <laughs> if you need people, there they are. That's right. I love it. You told a fabulous story off air of Man of War. Oh, sure. Man of, Man of War was... Um, and first, let's everybody know. I, I, we know who Man of War is. Okay. So, tell the folks Man of War. Man of, Greatest thoroughbred uh, of all time. Man of War would, I guess, yes, the mostest horse. That's the right. horse with the mostest. Yeah. Um, won everything. And the other two, I would say, would be, of course... Uh, Secretary and mm -hmm. Citation. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, that, but that's me. Somebody might have a different list. Anyway, there was a, a very arrogant, uh, dr driven guy, Samuel Riddle, who lived in around York County, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, in that Mason Dixon line, mm -hmm. which is, of course, where half my family's from. So that's how I know the story. And um, he um, got this horse for his wife to hunt, and it was man of war. Can you imagine? Very young. And Oof. <laughs> it just wasn't quite, I mean, he could do it, but the groom said, well, Mr. Riddle, I think that horse should go to the track. And by God, it did. But to give you a clue to the kind of man Riddle was, he finally left York County because he infuriated all the Amish, Amish as well as the people that lived there. So <laughs> he has Man of War, Man of War's won everything, and he wouldn't really breed Man of War to too many good mares. He wanted to breed her to his own. Oh, so we okay. did not get the full use. That's right. another thing. People don't understand genetic capital. We did not get the full use of the genetic capital. But, you know, it, it, there's some out there, but you, you have to kind of look for it, Patty. Yep. That's right. Wow. <laughs> I love that story oh, <laughs> because um, I, it, it, put, um, it personified and put some background to a horse that we really only know from mainstream media. Um, you have offered perspective of like behind the scenes and you do it in such a way that is not just um, tied to man of war, do, not just tied to your books, but just about every way you communicate. <laughs> I just love that skill that you have. Well, you know, I wish, I mean, I wish there were a bunch of us here that were horse people because everything comes up. That's one of the great things. There's no political correctness among mm -hmm. horse people. You sit down and you say what you think and you get it out there and it can be just like a swirl in your uh, dryer. I mean, things can be spinning around pretty fast. But because people hear one another out, we can find a consensus. I mean, you've been to some terrific, I mean, you know what some of the, those mm -hmm. board fights are like. 
it, it works out, and, and that is my fear, is we're, we're losing the face-to-face -face contact in our country. Because you can't... Because of this. Yeah, you yes, can't work right. things out on the computer. You have to sit down with somebody. Well, I find it so refreshing that you don't have a computer. No, of course not. Isn't that great? Rita Maybe. Mae Brown does not have a computer. That's right. That's amazing. You don't need it. I don't know. You rarely, you rarely use a cell phone. How do, you, how do you write your books? Typewriter? My Mont Blanc diplomat pen and a piece of paper. Really? Yep. And then when you're done with the book, I give it you to mail typist. the manual. Oh, no, they die. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you give it to a typist? I give it to a wonderful typist. Um, her, first, her first name is Joy, and she is. And uh, she, she gets it going. And I, mean, I don't know how she struggles with some of this handwriting, but she does. But it's, it's I mean, well, there's two reasons. One, to bring the optic fiber to my house would be $8,000. This I is know, Afton? Yeah, I don't okay. really need it. Uh, right, actually Greenwood. I mean, Greenwood. Firewood yeah. says it's going to do it, Firefly yeah. or whatever, but we'll see. But the other thing is, I don't, I don't want to look at a screen. I don't want to do that to my eyes. It's like I won't yeah. listen to rock music. I don't want to do that to my ears. What's your music choice? Gregorian chants. Get out of what? town. No, really, yes. Why? Well, it's very spiritual. That's interesting. I would have never thought I that. I would never have guessed that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, well, I mean, I grew up in the church. I guess that's part of it. But um, On the which row? <laughs> I, oh, I know. I know. Because the church I went to was very, very old. It was from the 1600s. And the row you sat in was indicative of when your family got to the county. Well, mm -hmm. my family were sort of late. We got there in 1622. There were people that had actually gotten there earlier. They were unassigned assigned rows? Well, no. It was a... It was it's like a spoken. It was unexpressed. Okay. Yes. But here I got to tell you a great church story. Please. <laughs> my mother. My mother was wild as a rat, but she had impeccable manners. Okay. Which is that you can do that in the South. Okay. Well, anyway, so we have this gorgeous church. We finally made money. It was originally a log cabin. It was this beautiful, gorgeous Georgian Kurt. I mean, beautiful church. And so we're sitting in the fifth row, and uh, in front of us was the Mundus family, <laughs> and Mrs. Mundus would always process down the aisle. There were two big aisles, and we were on the right. Okay. Real so pearls one day my mother pepper. had had it. Real she pearls? Had, hmm? Real pearls? Of course. Okay. I'm just checking. Like, they were as big as robin's eggs. <laughs> just checking. I mean, so, she was, and so one day mama had it, and mother's sitting there, and she says in her stage whisper, this is a huge church. It has a balcony. But you can hear her. She says, she's so good, poor thing. <laughs> Gosh. I know. Wasn't it great? I think her mother knew my mother. <laughs> yeah, oh, much. my gosh. This is hilarious. <laughs> Kelly Dye, welcome to the show. Mary Blake, thank you for joining us. Lee Argy, thank you for joining us. You have a lot of folks watching right now. Rita Mae Brown. Um, I'm curious, um, as someone whose first career out of UVA was as a writer. Um, now, I was a newspaper writer. Um, I'm always curious with someone who's as uh, credentialed and as well accoladed as you are. Um, how you go about start to finish. Now, we've touched on it a little bit with your inspiration. We've touched on a little bit with your Mont Blanc and your paper. When do you know you're done? When do you know a book is finished? When do you know? When you I'm know, half blind. Do you, do you know if the book is going to be a hit when you're done no, writing it? Having a clue. Really? No. And you're like, let's put it out there? I'm just having a good time. I love the English language. I, I really do. I do. And I, I'm fairly well read, obviously. But um, my goal, I remember one time I was giving a speech, and somebody in the audience who knew of my educational background stood up and said, why have you squandered your talent? Because oh, I, write, I write commercial fiction, and I, you know, I got the Emmy nominations and all that stuff. And I, I had a moment, because I'm not really academic, and I don't care about being intellectual, uh, you you know, didn't lose your temper? No, of course not. Um, and I said, ma'am, if when I die, people say I was the Will Rogers of literature, I will, I will have lived a good life. That's a fine thing. Take people away from yeah. their troubles. Give them a little bit of... An escape. Yeah, let them laugh. Let them have... Mm -hmm. But let them learn a little something. If you've ever listened to Will Rogers, there was always good information in there if you wanted to listen. If you wanted to listen. And in every listen. one of these books like this one, there's information. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot in here about the Foreign Service. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and, and I always do that. You know, if you want to learn about these things, you can. You can, you can go further into it. But um, I have no desire to be acclaimed uh, academically. A, a, a bestseller in the Academy is 5,000 books. Do you know what would happen 
to me or John Grisham or <laughs> David Bob, if we sold 5,000 books, wow. we'd, be, we'd be done. <laughs> yeah. you, ha you have to learn how to reach people. Yeah. And you don't reach people by telling them you're smarter than they are. How are you reaching people? I make them laugh. I really do. Uh, and I want to, you know? You're good at it. Um, uh, I just, I'm not smarter than anybody else. I just have a little wrinkle in my brain that allows me to use language in a different way. I mean, everybody you meet knows something you don't. That yeah. is true. Let, get to it. Let them get it out. Yeah. And, uh, and a microcosm of that, and that's, that's the third sizzle reel undoubtedly, Harris. My question to Rita May all the way through that point, uh, a microcosm of everyone you meet um, has something that you can learn from. Mm -hmm. Mary Minor and the post office. Mary Minor lost her mother and father. And, put, and set the stage for okay. Mary Minor. Okay. Th these are the sneaky pie books. Actually, right. the... the uh, uh, Miss, the Mrs. Murphy mysteries and the cat partially writes them. Uh, well, of course the cat. I'm just the typist. What the hell, you know? But at any rate, um, this Cats. is this was a Smith graduate. I so I have so many friends who are Smith. I have to put them in there. And um, in her senior year, her parents were killed in an auto accident, so she inherits this farm. But they don't have a lot of money, and she gets a job at the post office. She doesn't. You know, she's, at, she's at, law, at a loss, obviously, on every level. And her, her major was art history. And, um, and it's the Crozet Post, post it, Office. The old right? Crozet Post the old Office, one, right. yeah. Um, and the lady there, M Mrs. Hogendober, takes her under her wing. Well, that's her backstory. When you come into Mary's life, uh, who's called Harry, because she married a man named Harris Dean, um, who's a vet, she's, you know, she's... When you first meet her, she's in her 30s. Now she's getting into her middle 40s. Every four books is one year. Every four books is a season. Spring, mm -hmm. summer, fall. That's how I keep it, keep it in my head. But she's, um, she's not very good at reading emotions. She's not very emotional. She's not the typical woman. Her husband is much more sensitive to people. This big six foot four guy. Um, but every now and then somebody has to jerk her chain and say, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Because she just yeah. sees the job and wants to get to it. And in, in ways, she's a flawed but delightful character. Now, most of the mysteries in the past, the flawed character who was had to be a drunk, you know, <laughs> harmed by a woman. I mean, but that was the deal in the right. 40s. Um, she's just kind of inept. So I love her, of course, because I'm kind of inept, you know? You mean in the South, it's a social imbiber. They're not, they're not drunks. They're social imbibers, right? Well... You yes. know, as, as my aunt said, spirits will never t touch my lips. But she, but she did have medical needs. That's right. <laughs> What's your favorite spirit? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Real, Southern champagne. Real Coke. <laughs> Southern champagne. But, but you, the more you get to know Mary, uh, Harry, the more you like her. And she and her best friend. And she just stumbles into things. She can be so stupid. And thank God those animals are there to help her out. <laughs> you have a uh, small appearance in the book. I do. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in the, one of the Sister Jane books, and Sister Jane is this amazing uh, horseman, hounds one, uh, houndswoman, uh, farm owner that so helps solve a lot of mysteries in the country. And, and, and what's so fun about Rita Mae's books is you'll be flipping through the page and there's the name of somebody, hey, I know that person, or it, you know, there's at least 10, 15 or so names, like it was Cindy, Cindy Chandler. Chandler, right? Yeah. And uh, I was reading through one day when they, Sister Jane was buying dog treats at the Animal Connection and there I was. I went, well, that's kind of cool. You know, what a surprise. I loved uh, <laughs> yeah. your line off air. What was the line? And I'm going to paraphrase here. Better treat me right, or you may show up at one of my books. <laughs> no, it's true. That's right. Think of what Don, Dante's roasting those people, and that was in the 14th century. So if you're not good to me, I put you in my book and I give you syphilis. <laughs> you give yeah, syphilis. you better be good to me. That's right. Watch out. <laughs> and you will live in perpetuity in literature with syphilis. Can you don't you, want to do who that. Said, who, who said that? <laughs> I missed that one. Who said that? She said if there, if someone's not good to her. She will put no, but them. You didn't say that. Someone in history say that? No, it was Dante. He's yeah. still Dante. roasting oh, people. Oh, oh, yeah. oh right. duh. Right. So now I, I can play. Oh Woo. my gosh, that is hilarious. <laughs> now, d don't ever screw around with a writer. I mean, that really is. It's just. It's just not Especially real bright. One that's as acclaimed as you are. Well, I don't know about that, but um, 
Well, I mean, they're, you know, some of these tell-all books are hysterical. You, oh my you get gosh. those, but... Is that going to be on the agenda for you? A tell-all? Yeah. Because you got some stories. Well... Some like a memoir, if you may? Well, I did one when I was 50 because my publisher said, you, you better write this down because what if you forget? Oh, God, was I mad at them? You know? Anyway, I, <laughs> but the, I'll tell you what happens is the closer you get to where you are, the more you pull your punches because you really don't want to hurt people. You yeah. don't. Yeah. And, I mean, is that kind of a concern of legacy? You just don't want to hurt people. I don't know if it's a legacy. Like, Patty and I know people who are harmed. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they've harmed themselves by you. too much alcohol, and other times they've been just hit out of the blue by things like dementia or right. MS. And you don't, you know, you got to be a little careful. Uh, now, if somebody's dead, of course, you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> it's fair game then. Or, or maybe you can drive them to it if you really don't like them. But it's um, I, I also, I'm not sure I have the ego to write about me. I'd read that book. I'd read that book. Yeah, I mean, just, just to hear some of the stories. I mean, you know, I mean, like, the stories, some I've heard the stories all you've air. told me, you know, yeah. about, about your growing up and, and just, about, just about life in general. Yeah, I'd read that book. I'd read that book. A- anytime. But, you know, well, it was more fun to hear it from you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, the, maybe one of the reasons to do something like that is to show what, what we aren't anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What you know, are you saying? It's smoke and mirrors? Yeah, I went, when I was little, well, there was no air conditioning, so you sat on the porch, and you talked, and you would, the, in the summers, of course, people would drink gin rickies or whatever, mm-hmm. and there would be lemonade, so but everybody knew so everybody, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's not so much now, and also, families were together, we didn't have the transportation systems that we have now, and in order to get a good job, you almost have to leave, you know, yeah. uh, I, and I miss all that, I do. I mean, I was raised by people born between 1880 and 1920, Mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And um, they were, they knew a lot. Yeah, it's great to listen to them. I mean, and I I like listening to, um, I mean, there there are a lot of people in the horse community that I really respect. I mean, I could listen to Pat Butterfield talk for hours. Do you know we went to the junior prom together? You did not. Yes, I went. I did not. I I, had not heard that story. Well, of course, it would sully his (laughs) reputation, and it was just why I'm telling it. But we went to the same high school. We were all on the tennis team together. Oh, my gosh. And I went with his best friend, and he went with uh, this real blonde bombshell. Oh, yeah. You know. (laughs) Pat was fun and still is. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, his stories, Tom um, Bishop's stories, Ellywood Keith Baxter stories. I mean, she could go on forever. Isn't she going to be 97 this year? 96 or 97? She's up there. And she's, bless her heart, she still wants to get on a horse. She, she lost the she last of the her. I, I don't know if she'd do that or not. She won the Metal McClay in 37. She did. The second year that was the Metal McClay. Yeah. Um, There's some amazing people around her, like Cindy Chandler, who we just won the Eclipse Award twice. Yeah. That's like the Oscars for horsemen. Right, for ra- right. Yeah, horse racing, yeah. And she's, her position is always perfect on a horse. Yeah. I mean, I could just spit pins. Yeah, I mean, she, yeah. And then, and Willie Drake. Yeah. And Willie Drake, who owned Mountain Lumber Company, a great antique wood One of your go-to company. clients. Uh, yeah. Before I mean, Animal for, Connection. Back, back in the day. And, and he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated for being a, a very excellent junior rider. And, and he inspired you to launch the business in some ways. He did. Yeah, he... He was big in recycling and found a niche and took a gamble and took a big chance. And, and that's, that is exactly what inspired me. I love that. So, and yep. Ernie. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, who's, if you can't be inspired by a Chesapeake, come on. Well, the reason I brought up Ernie <laughs> is, aren't you Chesapeake as well? A Chesapeake? No, yeah, but I grew up with him. That, was, that was my you, first dog. Right? Yep. Yeah. She got some. Yep. I love it. I love it. Let me throw this to you here. You have been such a pleasant interview. We have filled <laughs> 40 minutes, and it's felt like four minutes. And I think that is a testament to you. Well, I think it's because you're a good interviewer. No, I, I just stay out of the way. Uh, I would like to throw this to you. I have a, one final question. You, I'm sure, have a final question, too. Where, you know, I want to get how we can find your books and the folks that are watching so they can be touched by your titles and your books. The question I want to really want to know about is how do you maintain this incredible zest for life that's contagious? I started life in an orphanage. To me, every day is fabulous. You started life in an orphanage? I did. I did. That puts it in perspective. I, I'm deli- I'm, I should have been dead. I should have been dead a couple of times. In the women's movement, the gay movement, I mean, I should have been dead. I mean, sometimes I'll be with Gloria and I'll say, Gloria, 
we're not in prison, we're not dead, this isn't Russia, no matter what happened, we're still here. You know, we, whatever happens here, what we think is bad is really not, I mean, we could be in Syria. Oh, but yeah. I'm here, I'm alive, and I've been carried along this life by my friends. I mean, God loves you through your friends. And my friends have done it for me. That's your friends are the family you pick. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, family is blood, friends are fate. Yep. And I have wonderful, I don't know why they put up with me, but they do. And I mean, I, I'm alive. I mean, I'm alive because people fed me that I didn't even know. Hmm. So what do I have to complain about? Not a, oh, we, nobody really does. You know, you can always find something good in anything. We can, not yeah. everybody. Yeah, not everybody. But yeah. Well, work glasses half full of people. <laughs> true. That's what I like about you too. Well, I, I mean, I was I was um, at another business on Tuesday, spending some time, and and one of the dear people that worked there just came back from her family lives in Tibet. Well, part of them, you know, part, part of them live here and part of them live there, and just what she had to go through to go and see her family, you know, for the first time in a couple of years at a wing and a prayer and and what she was allowed to say or do or not do and cameras and things everywhere. We really are so very lucky, you know, for uh, everything that we have. So, yeah, that's my mission. That's my, that's my sermon. I love that. Be lucky. <laughs> and, and right now it's very fashionable to dump on America, you know. Slavery was worldwide. Mm -hmm. Hamilton owned slaves. Yes. You know, it wasn't just the South. They all did. At, at 1861, there were about 35,000 slaves in New York. There were 12,000 in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Somehow that doesn't get talked about. But no. at any rate, we have all benefit from, benefited from slavery. We have all benefited from the oppression of women. S let's go forward. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? 1.5 million children sleep on the streets of America every night. That, to me, is a real issue. I'm sorry if somebody's emotionally disturbed, but these kids need a home and food. Why aren't we talking about it? Yeah. I mean, that, that's where I get frustrated. And when I look and I realize people are complaining because they're actually rather well off. Yeah. That's a perfect stopping point. That was phenomenal. Phenomenal. How about it? Seriously. Phenomenal. Harris, you, look at that. The man's a pro. He already knows that that's a sizzle reel. He's marking that down. Harris Tolver is our director, and he's fabulous at his job. Um, Rita Mae Brown, where can we find your books? Well, in Barnes & Noble downtown, uh, Over the Moon in Crozet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know you can do it on e-books, but I don't know how you do that. Yeah. I really don't. You do it on Amazon. Yeah. Probably find yeah. it on downtown Amazon. Downtown Charlottesville. Yeah. yeah. We can do Guys, bookstores. Get these books. Get these books. She's fabulous. I truly yep. enjoy this. Um, this show is powered by Animal Connection. For more than 17 years, Animal Connection has been the, the ringleader and the market leader for animals in the Central Virginia community. And it's thanks to the sweat equity, the vision, and the risk-taking of Patty Bowden. Uh, we encourage you to visit her in the McIntyre Plaza. Just have a chat and get to know her. <laughs> because I think if you do, you're going to be coming back many times over. And if you want to know about hounds and history and horses of this area, you know, come and see me. I love talking about the hounds, and you know, I can let you love know. Love animals. Where, yeah, I, let, I can let you go where, where you can see things like this. And you know, foxhounds, when they are retired, make the most amazing house pets. They, you know, they love their job when they're there, but they also love to snuggle up on a sofa. Uh, on a bed, and they, they can be very, very loyal house pets. So, you know, if you're ever interested in something like that, you know, come see me. They're, you know, they're great dogs. I love it. Um, I love it. Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, put them on your phone. Put this show on your phone. <laughs> be there. We'll see you next Wednesday with Conrad. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm out of town, and my boyfriend's taking over the show, so who knows what's going to happen. Who knows what's going to happen. It could be big. <laughs> <laughs> we return back to our right. regular programming a week from next Wednesday. That's right. With What's Barking Local, All right. powered by Animal Connection. Bark Enjoy local. your afternoon, guys, and as always, bark Bark local. local. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Yay. Fun. It was so fun. Good. So good. We have one more thing to do. Didn't we got to take that hero photo. Yes. The hero picture. Judith, you're going to slide over for us, sir.